Hola, welcome. This is Dean Aldolano. All right, today we're going to work on a very important issue. Uh, a lot of it comes from conditioning and beliefs that we have. And in the process, a lot of times, we develop regret. So we're going to learn not only about regret, how we create it, but also, more important, we're going to give you some techniques so you can let it go. Let's, let me put it to you this way. A lot of the beliefs that many of us picked up along the way have to do with misery loves company. And the more of that that we can let go of, the more joyful, the fuller, and the more wonderful our lives become. A moment of regret or guilt, now that's natural. You know, when we've done something to hurt somebody or we've done something that really is against our natural integrity, so on, it is natural to feel a little bit of regret or to feel guilty a little bit about it. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. In other words, short term, maybe an hour. That would be a long time because what regret and guilt is supposed to do is to get us to become aware of something that we did or a way that we acted that was really out of context with who we really are. But a lifetime of regret is caused by belief and conditioning. Now when I say a lifetime, it might only be 10 years or 5 years or 2 years or 20. But what I'm getting at is that long-term regret is not a normal thing. It is brought about by what we believe and we feel about life. Beware of the hook. In other words, be really aware of the belief structures that hook you emotionally. Because, think, let's use this, and I, you maybe have heard me say this before. Think of the word emotion and break it down into E dash motion, energy and motion. In other words, it puts our emotions into motion. So when we have belief systems, conditioning, attitudes, ideas of regret, oftentimes when we're wanting to do something, accomplish something, it puts those feelings into motion and we feel useless, worthless. Sin and guilt, that's some of the hooks. Stuck in regret. Because you see, sin and guilt really do make us regret. We regret the things that we did. We regret our lives. We regret that we didn't experience and do what we wanted. Remorse. A search for redemption. When we're in a state of remorse, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to be redeemed. And that keeps us hooked into the thing that I'm a sinner. I'm a bad person. I'm not a very good person. I need to do something in order to be redeemed. In the long run, that creates self-punishment and sometimes in the extreme can cr even create martyrdom. So sin and guilt is a good thing to begin to eliminate from our lives, to get it out of our lives. Regret leads to hopelessness. Think about it. Okay? Don't believe what I'm saying. In other words, really put some thought into this and remember what regret feels like. When we're regretting that we didn't take Jane out or we didn't marry Sally or Sam or whomever or we didn't get that degree, whatever it is, there is a sense of hopelessness that comes about. And hopelessness leads to what? It leads to low energy. We don't feel like doing anything. We feel like, what's the use? What for? I've done that before. I've tried it before. I don't want to do this again. It also gives us a feeling of worthlessness because when we're in a state of regret, we're not really feeling that great about ourselves. And worthlessness sometimes equals consistent seeking of value in materialism because the natural thing in life is to move toward value, toward those things, those experiences, those creative actions that give us a feeling of what? Value. Give us a sense that life is worth living. If I only had, I don't know what your only had is, but 
Most of us have them, you know. If I only have got, had have gotten that degree, if I only had have married Jim, if I only had have, you know, <laughs> gone to school, if I had only become whatever, you know, who knows, you know, become the actor or become the poet or become the electrician or become the engineer, if I had only listened to my grandmother, if I would only listened to my father, and so on it goes. And all of this kind of thing, what does that create in us? Well, it creates a sense of self-pity, for one. And self-pity, of course, is just another form of what? Regret. I don't deserve love. Because when we're in a deep state of regret, a deep state of self-pity, we don't feel like we're, we're loved. We only, not only don't feel like we're loved, we don't even feel like we deserve love. I'm such a schmuck. God, look what I did. Look at all the mistakes that I've made. I can't seem to do anything right. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. You get the idea. How do I let it go? Because this is what's really important about what we're getting into. How do I let it go? Intellect is a very powerful tool, so we'll touch on that. We'll touch on reprogramming and how you can reprogram that subconscious mind so that now your emotions take a different track. They don't lead you into a state of misery. The awakening. What is the awakening? When we realize that we don't have to live in these kinds of states of feeling miserable. It's not necessary. It wasn't really even meant to be in that sense. But since it is sometimes, now we need to do something about it. Accepting joy. Accepting joy seems to say, oh, wow, well, that's pretty natural. Well, not for a lot of people. When they've been through a lot of bad times, a lot of pain, a lot of abuse, Boy, accepting joy really is not that easy a kind of thing. All right? All right, let's touch on the intellect first. The intellect is a very powerful tool because oftentimes you can think yourself through things. And believe me when I tell you that when you have a good, strong intellectual insight, it oftentimes will also create an emotional shift. And that emotional shift will give you a very different perception of reality and make you feel different about it. One little simple statement is, is I did what I did. Yeah, I did what I did. Yeah, I really goofed. You know, I said things to my son I should have never said. I said things to my wife I should have never said. I said things to my parents I should have never said. And on it goes, but I did what I did. That's right, I did steal, that's right. I did do some bad things. That's right. That's exactly what I did. So what? That's right. So what? And the so what is, it's gone. It's done. It's dead. It's yesterday. Let me ask you something. All the money that you had yesterday or last year, how much of it can you spend today? None. Zip. zippity doo -da. You can't spend one red nickel of what you spent yesterday last year or in your whole lifetime because it's already spent. You don't have it anymore. In the same sense, what you did is exactly what you did. Also think about it at the time, it wasn't right or wrong. It might have been what you felt was the best thing you could do at the time. Maybe you felt you couldn't really do anything different. Maybe you felt that that's what you had to do. Maybe you went along with the crowd. Maybe you were a young person of 15 or 16 or whatever, and they were out to rob houses. And you decided you better go along because you wanted to be accepted. You wanted to be part of that crowd. Or maybe you went along with the boss, or you went along with something your wife wanted or your husband wanted, or, and it really wasn't something you wanted to do, but you felt you had to in order to be accepted. That sometimes is a big one for people. That's right. You know, I'm going to do this because I really need to be loved. That's a very strong hook, by the way. The best thing I can do now is what? Let it go and move on. That was a real good insight for me during the years that I spent, and I spent many, by the way, in deep, dark depression. 
And I was working at jobs and doing things that I, I mean, I hated. I hated. And I probably hated myself for doing them. But at some point I said to myself, you know what? It's where I'm at. This is what's going on in my life. I'm really down. Things aren't going too well. And this is what I've got to deal with right now. Because if you don't deal with what's going on in the present time, because regret tells us that it ought to be different. It shouldn't be this way. This is not what it like it's supposed to be. Wow, does that take us out of the present moment? And when we get out of the present moment, guess what? We don't have much personal power. So you know what is? The best thing I can do right now is to accept what is and do what I can to move on and to let go of the past. Remember, all that money has been spent. You can't spend it anymore. You know, this is a wonderful poem, and I've used it, and I've used poetry actually all of my life in a lot of ways, and I've used it as a way to pick myself up. And this was the name of a film, by the way, and uh, you might remember it, it was called Invictus. That's right. And I'm going to read that poem. Come on, read along with me. You might want to put it to memory. Out of the night that covers me black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul, for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud under the bludgeoning of chance. My head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me un afraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how par charged with punishment the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Let's read that last one again. It matters not how straight the gate or how charged with punishment the scroll. You see, it really doesn't matter what you've done in the past, how bad, how wrong, how awful, how mistakenly for you are the master of your fate. I am the captain of my soul. In other words, you are free today to create it however you want. And putting that to memory, putting that to mind so that when you do get down, when things get bad, when it gets tough, you can remember these lines. Reprogramming. We all know how the subconscious works. There's been so much of that that's been talked about, particularly in the last 20 or 30 years. We know that we get to our destinations unconsciously. Oftentimes we've driven 20 or 30 miles. We don't know how we got there. And so much of our life is the same. Something somebody says or something we see triggers a response, an emotional response. And all of a sudden I'm feeling, oh, terrible. I don't know why. Maybe I'm feeling good. When it rains, I feel good. You know why? And <laughs> I do, by the way. As a kid, they would ring the siren if it rained hard enough and I didn't have to go to school. Wow, so rain made me feel good. Self-hypnosis is a great way to turn things around. You can learn self-hypnosis. In fact, I'll mention my book a little bit later. I get it deep into that kind of reprogramming where you can turn these things around on your own through your own understanding of how the mind works. And I get into it in detail. EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique. It's one of the better techniques that's come along in the last 10 years or so. And in a moment, I'm going to go through it with you. So you can actually see and feel and understand how it works. Creative Visualization, that was a book that was written by a student of mine, Shakti Gwain. The book is sold in the multi-millions internationally. The use of your imagination to turn things around, to create your life and move it in the direction that you want. Again, my book also gets into that in deep detail. So you can use this wonderful method 
to direct your life in the direction that you want it to go. All right, let's go into emotional freedom technique. You can see some dots there on that person on the diagram. Well, those relate to acupuncture points. When we have emotional blockage, what's an emotional blockage? When you're depressed, isn't it? Man, when you're depressed, ugh, I mean, you don't have any emotion. You don't have any feeling. The feeling that you do have is, ugh, I mean, that is an emotion, of course. But you feel like you can't get it up. You can't get on. You can't get anything done. You don't even want to get anything done if the depression is that deep. As I said, I spent many years in that state. So emotional freedom technique, by tapping on acupuncture points, which I'll show you in a moment, helps you to release that energy. It helps the energy to become free so that it begins to move. So now you can begin to take actions in your life that bring about what you want to do. All right, let's create a story. And I'm just, let's move it around regret, okay? And Keep in mind that the words I'm using are not necessarily the words you should use. You should do this somewhat intuitively. In other words, you need to bring it into a context and wordage that is real for you. But understand, more important than the words is your intent. In other words, what are you trying to bring about? But anyway, let's say that I'm working on regret. And I regret that I didn't become a movie star. Even though I didn't fulfill my dream of becoming a movie star and getting into the movies and getting into films, I love and accept myself completely. You listen to that? The last part, I love and accept myself completely. In other words, I'm saying, even though I did what I did, I still love and accept myself completely. You notice where I'm tapping? I am tapping on the karate chop. Okay, that is a major acupuncture point, okay? So I'm helping to release the energy in that sense. I'm going to do it three times. So I've just done it once, right? Second time, even though I didn't fulfill something that I really wanted to do in my life, and that was to get into acting, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I feel bad and sometimes I feel regret because I didn't get into acting, I love and accept myself anyway. Right, so three times. Now we're going to move to this point right here, okay? Right by the eyebrow. And we're going to shorten what we're saying now and bring it down more succinct. I feel regret. I feel I let down on myself. I feel I let go of myself. I feel I didn't fulfill myself. I'm feeling regret. I'm feeling bad about myself. I'm willing to let that go, okay? So we've moved to here, to here, to here to here, to here, and also over here to the collarbone. Now I'm also moving under, right under the arm. I'm willing to let that go because by this time, I'm telling myself that I'm willing to let these feelings go. I'm willing to let them move on. I no longer need to feel regret. I can, I'm letting go of this regret. It's okay for me now to feel good about myself. I'm willing to feel good about myself because I know a new day is here today. Today has all the possibilities I need. I'm willing to let today be a brand new day. And I feel good about myself. The last one right on top of the head, okay? So we just went through a whole cycle there. But if I'm working on something, I'm gonna go through it again, okay? I'm gonna start again. I'm gonna say, even though I've had some regret in my life, I love and accept myself completely. Even though I'm feeling regret about things that I didn't do for myself, I love and accept myself completely. Even though I have these regrets, I'm willing to let them go, and I love and accept myself anyway. I have these regrets. I feel like I let myself down. I feel like I didn't fulfill what I wanted to do. I'm willing to let go of these regrets, I'm, and so on. Now, one of the things that you need to do as you're doing a technique like this is you need to pay attention to your intuition. In other words, a feeling may come up and you may say, you know, I remember my mom telling me that I would never make it, that I was just, I just never finished anything that I did. 
Wow, even though I feel like I've never finished anything that I wanted to do, I love and accept myself completely. Even though I never finished the things that I wanted to do in my life, I love and accept myself anyway. Even though I haven't finished the things that I want to accomplish, I love and accept myself completely. And so on. Go through the process again. In other words, you're following your intent. You're following your intuition. You're following those emotions and what? Unblocking them, releasing them, letting them go. Now, if you need to, more information about this technique, you can pull it up on YouTube. There's a lot of great information right there on YouTube. In fact, I have a video just on EFT. Write in Dino Delano in the search, and you'll see the one that says EFT. In fact, it's had a, a lot of people that have looked at it and used it and so on. Okay? All right. What else can we do? Emotional freedom is a return to joy and making more intelligent choices. Understand, when you release the emotions that are hooked into guilt and sin and regret and self-pity and all of this, you will all of a sudden become aware that you have way more choices than what you realize. So releasing these things is a wonderful experience giving you emotional freedom. And emotional freedom leads to what? More intelligent choices. The more choices you have, the more possibility you have of making a choice that is the better one for you. Okay, if you go to coolzenhealing.com, you can pull up my book there, which is called Discover the Magic in You. And there's a wonderful video there that goes through the dynamics of what's in the book, what we cover in the book, what you will gain from it. Thanks for being with me. This is Dino Delano. And please, please, leave a comment, would you? All right? It helps me to do better videos and bring forth more valuable information. Thanks again for being with me. Take care.